Hey rock stars, welcome back to Metaphysical Monday. I'm Susan at the Fossil Cartel. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, this Wednesday we're going to have one of our Facebook Live shopping experiences at 2 o'clock. And I thought I would share with you the healing properties of three of the stones that we're going to make available in bracelet form for you. Um, so I, there's going to be a lot more than three items, but I didn't want to overwhelm you today. I thought three, three rocks is a good amount to digest. So we'll start with Super 7. So these are, we just got in these new Super 7 bracelets. We've got these bigger 12 millimeter and then these 7 to 8, they're more like 7 millimeter ones. It's a really pretty stone. It's um, mainly amethyst and it's got seven minerals in it including, besides the amethyst, clear quartz, smoky quartz, cacoxinite, gothite, lepidocrosite, and rutile. And it was actually named Super 7 by Melody, who wrote a book called Love is in the Earth. You might be familiar with it. It was around for years. In fact, it was the book, the best-selling book of crystal healing um, of all time. And I don't know why they stopped printing it. Um, I believe I understand that Melody had passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but the, it's out of print. We do have some of the supplemental copies, so even though she uh, named Super 7, it's not in the main Love is in the Earth book, it's in the supplemental A book. And so here's what Melody says about Super 7. It assists one in seeing auras and in maintaining the connection between the physical and ethereal planes. It can assist in all endeavors promoting conscious awareness of that which has remained hidden for eons. It's used to promote telekinetic pursuits like telepathy, clear audience, clairvoyance, awareness channeling, universal creativity, to further healing and wellness on all levels and for earth healing as well. And um, it is being used as the nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity embracing karma, causation, and the potential for reincarnation, all based upon the science of theosophy. Never, and it never needs cleansing or energizing. So it's a great, great stone. Um, some people might call it seven included stones. I think Melody didn't like other people calling it Super 7. I think she had a trademark on it, but I'm not sure where the status of that lies. I'm sorry if I'm breaking any boundaries by calling it Super 7, but um, Melody did coin the term, so I want to give her credit. And that's where I got the information from, from her book, uh, the supplemental copy for uh, Love is in the Earth, Supplemental A. And next we have Hemomorphite. This is a gorgeous stone. It's natural color. A lot of it comes from China. It's just amazing, the color. I love that color. So he, and this information comes from the Book of Stones by Richard Simmons and Natasha something or another. Uh, it manifests the energy of well-being on many levels. It brings balance to the aura field, dissolving and dispelling dark spots of ne negativity or weakness. It affects the emotional body in very positive ways, bringing in a vibration of joy. It enhances the communication of truth of one's feelings and can help in the process of healing dysfunctional relationships. It facilitates inner growth and is a stone of compassionate empathy and will enhance the talents of healers and spiritual counselors. And then we have um, Botswana agate. Botswana agate is amazing. It's also one of my favorite stones. So Botswana agate is known for its banding, like at the, the bottom two stones there, and there's one right there, you can see the banding. It's such a beautiful, gentle energy stone. It's from Botswana, Africa. And this is from Love is in the Earth, the information. It can be used to stimulate the exploration of the unknown and further one's quest toward the enlightened state. It enhances creativity and helps one to release emotional nuances where it ha they have been repressed. It also allows one to look toward the solution rather than to dwell on the problem. It stimulates the crown chakra and encourages eternal love. It encourages conscientiousness and vigilance in tasks 
and helps one to maintain an ever-present watchfulness during activities requiring circumspe circumspection, deliberation, and our vigilance. It helps to maintain a forthright character and sustain an attentiveness to detail which further facilitates the sensitivity to and the recognition and understanding of the complete picture regardless of distortion. Now, it's interesting because I was always under the impression that, and I read somewhere a long time ago that it was really good for feminine energy, but I was just looking online and um, I saw where it said it's, it's a man stone. So <laughs> I don't know, but to me it's very feminine energy. It'd be interesting to see what you think about it. So these are three of the items we're going to have uh, for our Facebook Live shopping on Wednesday, this Wednesday, 2 o'clock. And there's lots, lots more, but these are uh, three brand new bracelets that we haven't had in before. So I wanted to share that with you, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers.